Let's look at how to clean up and process this DNB breakbeat, taking us from this. to this. So here is our 170 BPM break beat. It's a royalty free recreation of a typical sampled break. And like many classic breakbeat samples, it contains muddy bass and mid-range frequencies that will clog up precious space in a mix. So obviously we want to clean up this dense drum loop, but leave its character intact. And multiband dynamics processors allow you to treat problem frequency areas in isolation. We're gating the sample's low and low mid frequencies, allowing the kick and snare to poke through in those areas, while removing the low mid reverb and mud between. The upper frequencies are left untouched, which maintains the sample's natural splash. We still want to keep the original splash and vibe of the break. So we've cleaned out a lot of that mid-range mud, and now a touch of slight saturation with the UBK1 plugin adds tightness. But the brakes kick is still rather boomy, so to control this flabby low end, we'll use a touch of multiband compression. And this is clamping down on the low tail of the brake. Around 1 to 2 dB of limiting then flattens out the signal's dynamics. For added punch and character we've then layered several extra drum layers on separate audio channels. So there's this kick and snare loop that mirrors the hits in the main break. There's a shaker here that adds pace to the groove. Then extra hi-hat and noise sounds fill out the treble region. Brake and extra percussion layers are then grouped to a single bus, upon which we've applied processing to meld everything together. Harsh treble is shelved down with an EQ. So there's this fantastic API Vision channel strip plugin. We're using its preamp distortion. But it's mixed in parallel using an audio effect rack in live, so we're blending the dry and processed signals. And after that we've then got Fatso style compression, again with the UBK1. What we're trying to do here is mimic the overdriven crunch of 90s hardware. The brake is pretty squashed after all this processing, so a transient shaper adds a final touch of snap. But if you listen carefully, you can hear that the second snare of every bar lacks punch compared to the first snare of the bar. Drum and bass is an extremely fast genre, and you'll often get a kick and snare quite close to each other in a drum break, so compressors can't always react quickly enough, and you sometimes lose attack of hits, as we've done here. So to remedy this, we've rendered the break to an audio file, and duplicated the first snare over to every second, which gives us a more consistent result. To finish here, we'll just AB what we've done against the original break we started with. So here's the original break. And here's our processed one. <laughs> 